Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the Elitist Gamer. With all of the excitement of Project Morpheus and the Oculus Rift the uh, last week or so, I saw an article on Ars tonight about the last piece of the functionality puzzle for the Xbox One controller finally being available to PC users. And it got me thinking. And it's something we should think about. The evolution of game controllers, and game pads, joysticks, from the beginning to now, and what the future is going to hold. There's also been a lot of discussion around Project Morpheus and the Oculus Rift in terms of should it be a Microsoft Connect type functionality technology? Should it be something like the PlayStation Move? Should we adopt Nintendo's controller functionality style? Or does the future require something new that we today are not smart enough to envision? Which is usually the case. You look at old stuff from the fucking 1950s and 40s, you look at their concept of what the future was, and it's way out to fucking lunch. Uh, everything was basically a souped up version of the present day. So that 1955 commercial about what the 1970s or 80s was like was really 1950s gadgets uh, with a twist. So I always maintain it's hard for us to anticipate future advances. They usually happen and occur in those areas that we today are not wise enough to predict. Let's take a look back. If we go back to the original Space War, uh, Pong, arcade machine, they all had controller interfaces. And on the PC, you know, we're a bit spoiled. That wasn't always the case. We used to have just pretty much primarily just shitty analog joysticks. But nowadays, in terms of the amazing variety that we're lucky enough to fucking have on the PC, we've got game pads. We can use Xbox One now. <laughs> we can use PS4 controllers, PS3. We've got flight simulator specific joysticks for the trigger style. Basically, you name it, there's probably a joystick out there for that functionality. And a lot of that was due to the arcade culture. If you go back to some of the first arcade machines and the first waves of arcade machines, one of my favorite games of all fucking time, Satan's Hollow. Love that game. Love it to death. Loved it on the Commodore 64. Loved it in the arcade. It had uh, a two-way control and it was like a, a trigger joystick, right? Tron, another gorgeous joystick. Tron, the arcade cabinet, it was a glowing uh, joystick, multiple directions. I believe it was Akari Warriors had a uh, unidirectional stick. I don't know how many it did. I think it did over a dozen different directions. 49 if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong on that. Let me know, correct me, or I'll research this afterwards. But um, the arcade, particularly the golden age of the arcade, saw a huge variety. Crystal castles with the trackball. We had uh, computers starting to use mice. We had arcade machines that did four-way, eight-way, two-way, 49-way. We had spinners. And... I, on my arcade downstairs, have a spinner, and I'll do a future video to kind of update everybody on my arcade cabinet, but uh, even spinners, there was a massive variety of spinners. Arkanoid had a completely different spinner than Tron. There were spinners that had a button component to them. You could press them and activate another function. Uh, spinners varied in terms of how much fly they produced, you know, to the left or to the right, and how that translated to how much your on-screen avatar moved. So really, for those of us who grew up in the arcade culture, we're used to seeing a shit ton of joysticks. But there was actually a time when there was more or less a universal joystick for the home console slash computer market. None other than this stick here. The mighty Atari 2600 joystick, which, let's face it, it's pretty iconic nowadays. What it used 
was a nine pin connector. And this nine pin connector could plug into your Atari 2600, your Commodore 64, your Atari 400, Atari 800, Atari ST, Atari 5200, 7800, etc., etc. It could plug into a shit ton of devices. Even 16 bit computers later, it could still, it was still compatible with. The design up until the late 80s or mid to late 80s was essentially a take on this though. So all those joysticks I mentioned, whether it was two-way, four-way, eight-way, etc., etc., they were all more or less based on this type of de design. You know, sure, some looked like a trigger, but more or less they were all the same. It wasn't until the NES console was released that we, we got to see the gamepad, right? The gamepad style controller. Now, mind you, the NES one, almost every bit as iconic as the Atari 2600, depending on your age, probably more iconic. You know, there's wallets, there's uh, smartphone covers that mimic the original NES controller. And it wasn't completely unique. The ColecoVision had a similar controller uh, in terms of, you know, a numeric keypad, but it was basically a small version of the Atari 2600, the actual joystick. The NES was the first one to really kind of, for mass market, give you that D-pad on there, which was digital at the time. Fast forward to the PlayStation, the Dreamcast, and you've got analog sticks added to the game pads with the digital directional D-pad. Which brings us pretty much to the present day. You've got your Xbox controllers, you've got your PS4 controllers, which, despite the fans on both sides and... I've made no secret. I love all machines. I'm a gamer. I'll go wherever the games are. And I've got an Xbox One, I've got a PlayStation 4, and a PC. It doesn't matter to me. It's all about the games. But what's interesting is thinking about where the controllers are going to go. So here we've got Project Morpheus coming. We've got the Oculus Rift coming. And there's, been, there's people out there that have made some cool fucking ass uh, peripherals work with the Oculus Rift. There's an omnidirectional treadmill device I've seen, which can be cool if you're trying to lose weight, but let's face it, I'm a fucking lazy ass gamer. I want to sit on my couch. I want to sit back in my reclining chair with a gamepad, mouse, or keyboard in hand. I don't necessarily always want to exercise. And I'm sure a lot of you guys feel the same way. So that'll have a niche market, no doubt. But for a lot of us, we want the VR, but still sit on our ass. What's cool is the types of devices that we'd be holding in our hand. So we've got the Wii U style, we've got the PlayStation Move, we've got the Xbox Connect style. And it's, it's a pretty safe bet the PlayStation Move style device is going to work with the Project Morpheus. We've already got people out there that have gotten the Connect to work with the Oculus Rift. But are they the most ideal devices? And that's where I was going back to the prediction, right? When you're when you're trying to predict the future, what type of a device can we not anticipate right now that would make all the fucking difference with a virtual reality device? And I was thinking about it, and it's like, I don't know. I have no idea. But I'm really fucking excited to see it evolve. How is it going to evolve? You know, we know where we're starting out with the uh, PlayStation Move style and the Kinect, but what's it going to evolve into? That's got me so curious, and it's so important to a proper virtual reality experience. You know, you play a game like Skyrim. Do either the Kinect or the Move do a fantastic job of allowing you to recreate the feeling of holding a shield or swinging a sword? Well, I don't know. I know there's pros and cons to each. But what would the ideal device look like? That's got me fucking excited. Because I don't know. But I am curious what you guys think. What do you think the ideal device would look like? That can balance between allowing you to be a lazy ass gamer, but deliver that awesome, mind blowing fucking virtual reality, transport you to another fantasy or science fiction world of your dreams within a game style environment. Really curious to hear what you guys think. 
Leave your comments below. Let's get some discussion going on this. As always, fuck, I can't wait. Cheers, guys.